I want to give a special shout out to all my patrons first. Thank you so much to my Biblio Spren, Biblio Howlers, and my Biblio Mansers. It means a lot to me that you give me your extra support for my passion and hobby. Hi everyone, uh, Patek here. So for today's video, this will be something a bit uh, negative, I guess. But at the same time, I want to be, I want to try to be positive about uh, this topic. And this is about uh, do not judge these books by their cover art. Positive in the way that the books are good, but negative in the way that their cover art in my opinion, are not representative of the quality of the books or there are way too different uh, competitive content inside the books. I think, uh, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, two years ago, I think I posted a video about uh, books that I bought because of their beautiful cover art. But for this, for this list, this video, well, these are about books that I encourage you to try look past the cover art. And of course, before I start, this is not a comprehensive list. And again, these arts, uh, although they are not suitable to my taste, they are just my opinion. I will try to explain why. And also, I will only mention the first book of a series or a standalone novels. So yeah, these are amazing books. And in my opinion, you should read them despite of their uh, mediocre or inferior uh, cover art. Let's start with the first one. And I think you will know where I'm going with this, right? The first one I'm going to mention is probably the most accurate depiction of this topic. And I am talking about Heroes Die by Matthew Woodring Stover. Every time the topic about great book with, well, atrocious or maybe uh, horrible cover art, this book will always be the first one that comes to my mind. Always. Because it actually stopped me from reading uh, the book for years. Even though I heard so many great things about it, I kept on pushing it. Well, I kept on pushing it off my TBR pile because I just thought that the, t the cover art is just not appealing. And I know we should never judge the content based on the cover art, but I do judge my purchase, uh, purchase of a book based on the cover art. Good cover art will make me want to look further, will make me want to check further into the reviews, into the, into the premise and all that. And heroes die failed uh, in that aspect, in every aspect, because in my opinion, both the US and the UK cover art of Heroes Die is just, well, it is awful. One of the worst cover arts that I have ever seen and absolutely not representative of the quality of the book. This book is absolutely awesome. It is incredible in my opinion. And although I haven't read past the first book, I haven't finished reading the series, but this one work absolutely well as a standalone. Even the author, Matthew Buttering Stouffer, admitted that the cover art to Heroes Die definitely uh, has a big impact on the sales of Heroes Die. And that is unfortunate, even though we always say that, do not judge the book by its cover. It matters. Cover art do matters. Good cover art will drive more sales. And a good cover art to a good book, according to many people, will drive that sales further. And yeah, uh, Heroes Die has been published for quite a while now, I think more than a decade. I cannot actually remember when this was first published, but I remember when I was reading it, this was certainly ahead of its time. If you haven't read Heroes Die, I strongly recommend you to pick it up and read it, seriously. And it worked, uh, the book absolutely worked as a one-off standalone novel, even though it is a series, it worked. I mean, I haven't read past the series and I felt very satisfied from reading Heroes Die. So yeah, you should do that. And moving on to the second cover art, here is something that you should know about me. There are two types of cover art that I tend to generally dislike. The first one is when a cover art to a fantasy or sci a sci-fi book uses a photography of a real person. This, more often than not, will be, well, <laughs> I will dislike it more often than not. And this is another example of it. I have voiced my opinion about this cover art so many times, and I know that the author is very professional about it. So he won't say it in public, but I am sure that he agrees. I am talking about The Grey Bastards by Jonathan French. This is the winner, one of the winner of SPFBO held by Mark Lawrence. When this became the champion, I was so delighted by it because this is an awesome book and the cover art, the original cover art to the self-published fantasy edition, uh, it was illustrated by Raymond Swanland, an incredible cover artist, amazing artwork. I think this cover art is super fitting uh, to The Grey Bastards. I have read the book, I really enjoyed it, and I really need to finish this trilogy. But 
after it has been picked up by i think it was crown yeah it has been picked up by crown books my initial excitement was well this means i will be able to acquire a hardcover edition of this cover art by raymond swanland uh, to the gray bastards but evidently it is not it is not the truth it is not the fact okay in reality the cover to the traditionally published edition is absolutely in my opinion ugly hideous is it's just awful it's just one of the worst really i'm i'm not a fan of this cover art but the book itself is super good it is super good again this cover art the traditionally published edition doesn't actually capture anything about uh, the content of the book in my opinion the sub-published fantasy edition now that one definitely captured the content of the book so if you have been uh, reluctant to pick up the gray bastards because of the cover art well ignore ignore this cover art this is a great book and well i'm speaking to myself as well because i need to continue reading this series the first book is really good and the trilogy is completed now i heard that originally this series was supposed to be i think four books but it has become a trilogy i think i could be wrong on this okay but i think it was because of uh unsatisfying sales of the trilogy so yeah that's a bit of a shame that the author cannot realize uh, the full vision uh, of, of his story. That's really unfortunate and even more unfortunate, this situation has happened so many times to many authors. And moving on to the next one, I want to make it clear first that I am a fan of books published by Orbit Books. Orbit Books tend to publish some of the uh, most beautiful cover art in fantasy uh, for the past few years, ever since 2018. Most of the fantasy or sci-fi books they publish tend to have an incredible cover art, but still, there are some misses. And well, the next three, the next three books are all published by Orbit Books. And there were days when the fantasy or sci-fi books that Orbit Books published doesn't have a great cover art like they do now and the first one is the Tap of swords by michael j sullivan again just like the great bastards i have been very vocal about my dislike of this cover art. this is not royce and hadrian that is christian bale and some unknown some unknown guy who is supposed to be royce yeah that is not royce at all and that is certainly not hadrian so yeah when i first saw this cover art it made me reluctant to pick up the book. I mean, again, the cover art is just not appealing to me. But thanks to a lot of uh, positive reviews, it made me want to try reading the series. And although I was initially disappointed with Theft of Swords, but the series keeps on getting better and better with each book. And the Rider Revelations become one of my favorite series of all time. It is an amazing series. And if you love bromance, if you want a character with great banter and also great relationship between the main characters and substantial character development for the woman in the entire series definitely pick up the radia revelations i have talked about uh, the radia revelations so many times on my channel and it is for many good reasons and on reread the first book the theft of swords improves significantly so yeah even though i'm still super disappointed with this cover art of the theft of Swords, this is uh, overall a great series and you should pick it up if you love everything i just said uh, earlier plus the plotting and also the foreshadowing everything was handled uh, really well and although the world of elan the world where the radia revelation takes place now contains so many books this one definitely has a very satisfying ending and in my opinion it is still the best series by michael j sullivan and moving on to the next one i will be talking about the fifth season by nk jemison the first book in the broken earth trilogy i think many of you know by now that the broken earth trilogy has received a lot of acclaims and also praises in the uh, science fiction and fantasy community whether it's by judges reviewers and readers well it has received a lot of praises including mine I'm a fan of the fifth season and also the third book, uh, The Stone Sky. The second book, unfortunately, uh, did not click with me. But in my opinion, this cover art uh, did not manage to capture anything about the book at all. This is a series that takes place in a post-apocalyptic world. And also the magic system is brilliant and all that. But this cover art, although it has a really good design in my opinion, but the cover art itself, the illustration, well, you can tell that this is taken from a Shutterstock or maybe a stock photos from Archangel Images. Well, wait, is that true? Yeah, it is true. See, I still remember. <laughs> so yeah, 
uh, my point stands that the cover art really does not capture anything about the book or the series and this applies to the entire uh, trilogy of course the special edition whether it is published by subterranean press or the upcoming uh, special edition published by curious king it's a different story. They are gorgeous. But the trade edition, the most popular edition, just like this one, well, I think it does not capture the brilliance of the fifth season. And if you feel reluctant about trying this book or this series because of the cover art, definitely, again, ignore that sentiment and read this trilogy. It is brilliant. And NK Jameson's books, well, I really need to read more of her books. I love the Broken Earth trilogy, but somehow I have never read anything else by her. And moving on to the next one, earlier I mentioned that I have two type of cover arts that generally doesn't work with me. The first one is, again, photography of a real person or the cover art of a fantasy or sci-fi book. The other one is when a cover art, well, it, it features only writings or, well, or the title. And well, I have to mention, unfortunately, JCT by Fondali. I think many of you, if you have been a follower of my channel, you know how much I love the Greenbone Saga. But there were uh, several months when I actually did not try to read JCT because of the cover. Well, it's not appealing to me. It feels lazy. It is just the words jade city like what is this supposed to portray about the book <laughs> it's jade city i get it that's the title but that's it that's the only thing that you get from the cover art so yeah i remember not wanting to pick up the book because of the cover art fortunately some people some readers convinced me to truly pick it up and i am truly thankful because without them i would have missed out on the best trilogy that i have ever read and thankfully I don't know whether this is true or not, but I was browsing on Amazon and there is a new edition of Jet CD, Jade War and Jet Legacy coming this year. So maybe this one will feature a new cover art and hopefully this time it will be a much better cover art that the series deserve because as I said, this is the best trilogy that I have ever read and if you haven't read it, well, you know that it has received the highest of recommendations uh, from me. The Green Bone Saga is a masterpiece of a series. And for the next one, uh, the situation is a bit similar to the Jade City by Fondali. I am talking about The Vanished Birds by uh, Simon Jimenez. I read this one last year and I will have to thank Evie for sending me a paperback copy of The Vanished Birds. And even before that, I have heard so many great things about The Vanished Birds, but I never wanted to pick up the book because I just felt like the cover art did not manage to, well, to give me anything about the book. It did not make me want to try reading the book. And thankfully, I did finally try reading the first chapter and I was mind blown because out of so many books, out of so many authors, this is the first chapter of The Vanished Birds is one of the very few that instantly reminded me of reading Ken Liu's writing. And believe me, I am a huge, huge fan of Ken Liu's writing, especially in the Dandelion Dynasty. And yeah, the first chapter of this one captured what I felt so brilliant about Ken Liu's writing in all the positive way. Definitely pick up uh, The Vanished Boots. It is one of the best standalone that I have ever read. And yeah, it is just a sci-fi novel and it is a brilliant one in my opinion. And I will definitely read uh, The Spear Cuts Through Water uh, within this year. I heard that one is even better uh, compared to The Vanished Birds, which sounds incredibly insane to me because this is already super good. And speaking of amazing standalone book, the next one is Swan Song by Robert McCammon. I think the cover to Swan Song, they are boring. <laughs> they are just uninteresting. And this cover art, the original cover art, if I'm not mistaken, features this face on what is supposed to be a nuclear explosion, I think. And the face just felt comical. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it is still pretty recent that I read uh, Swan Song by Robert McCammon, and I am really glad that I did. Robert McCammon, he is an amazing author. I have read two books by him, but I just wish that he has a better cover art to, well, to attract more readers. There is no harm in having a better cover art. And the thing is, the foreign cover art, especially the Polish edition that has been revealed recently, is amazing. I wish the US or the UK edition has this kind of beautiful cover art. And maybe 
maybe one day we will get a special edition of Swan Song with a beautiful cover art. But as far as the content goes, even though this was published more than uh, two decades ago, but this is still one of the best, maybe even the best post-apocalyptic novel that I have ever read. It is superb. Please read it if you haven't read it. In my opinion, in my opinion, even though so many people compare the stand to Swan Song, if I have to choose, I will choose Swan Song easily. It is better than the stand. And for the next one, this is going back to a photography of a real person on the cover art. And this is for Blood Song by Anthony Ryan. This is one that I picked up based on so many positive reviews that taught me to read it after they know how much I love The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. And yeah, for a while, I was never interested in Blood Song and the cover art is partly responsible for it. I mean, what am I supposed to get from this? This is just someone flexing his bicep here. I mean, to be fair, this is a big bicep, okay? But yeah, this is not uh, this is not representative of the content of Blood Song. You won't be able to analyze the content of Blood Song at all from this cover art. And the UK cover art somehow is uh, even worse in my opinion. So yeah, uh, Blood Song is another example where the cover art does not manage to capture the brilliance of the novel. Blood Song is still the best novel by Anthony Ryan in my opinion and this cover art uh, did not manage to capture the brilliance of it. And speaking of the name of the win, well, the next one, I will have to mention the US uh, mass market edition of the name of the win. Probably, probably the most popular edition of the name of the win before the release of the 10th anniversary edition. But this cover art, well, what even is this? There is Darth Vader or maybe a character from Kingdom Hearts standing uh, on a grass field and there is wind blowing and that's it or to give a more popular reference this is a dementor uh standing on the grass field and yeah yeah i'm not a fan of this cover art at all but for the book the book itself i think many of you know by now it is one of my favorite book of all time despite what you think about uh, the state of the series not being finished the name of the win is to me a masterpiece and it will always be uh, that way. If you somehow haven't read The Name of the Wind, I still strongly encourage you to uh, to give it a read. Even though the series will probably never be finished, I think that it is still worth your time to experience reading Patrick Rothfuss' prose. And finally, for the last one, I will mention Gardens of the Moon by Stephen Erickson. This is not a really bad cover art per se, uh, if we're talking about quality itself, it is not a bad cover art in my opinion, but if we're talking about this cover art in terms of the contents of Gardens of the Moon, I think this is, well, this does not capture the epicness of Gardens of the Moon at all. Gardens of the Moon, even though from the first few chapters, you can already tell that this is the beginning of a truly epic fantasy series. And I think the cover art should be able to reflect that. And I, I still don't know what this cover art is supposed to mean. This is probably a tower on Moonspawn. I don't know. As I said, I really don't know what this what this cover art is supposed uh, to mean. If you know, do tell me uh, what you think about it. I mean, I even thought that this is Rapunzel's uh, tower. But as far as special edition goes, for example, uh, the Subterranean and Press edition, I think you know how beautiful the cover art is. But the mass market edition or the original hardcover edition, they just failed, in my opinion, at capturing the epicness of Malazan, Book of the Fallen, or Gardens of the Moon. So that's it. That's the end of today's video. And again, I just want to state it once more that these are just my opinions. If you love any of this cover art, if you think they are, if you think they are good presentation of the quality inside the books, then well, that's your opinion. Art is always subjective. I mean, the cover art that I directed for Felix Ortiz and also The Broken Binding uh, for Gardens of the Moon and also Death House Gate, some have agreed with the decision, some have not. And this is understandable. There is no harm done. Books, artwork, they are all art and art, in my opinion, when it's received by the recipient, it will always be subjective. More importantly, you should just read these books and series regardless of the cover art. That is the main purpose of this video. And yeah, do let me know what you think about uh, the books that I pick. And of course, do tell me which of your favorite books has an inferior cover art and you would like them to have a better cover art. And yeah, I think that's really pretty much it from me today. As always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye-bye.
Lastly, I want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons who keep on supporting me.